Hello my brothers and sisters of the Order, welcome back to the Order, I'm Celtic Templar, and yes y'all, welcome back to a another uh, Fantasy Friday video, and today y'all, we are going to be talking about Hobbits for Hobbit Day, or Hobbit Reading Day as it's known as, or Tolkien Reading Day as it's also been known. It will take place on September 22nd, but I decided to do it now because of the fact since it's a Friday and Fantasy, which is our, which is the only days I have it landed on, I decided we might as well also talk about the Hobbit folk, or the Little Folk, as it's also been known. Now, I want to put this a little bit of a background for y'all. I I am a major Tolkien fan, and yes, uh, most of my film or uh, fantasy areas actually always cover, well, major Tolkien groups, such as one of the first ones was the Dwarves. Now, another thing we have to understand, though, is with the fact of the Hobbits, we know we have to go through the whole detail about them, what they are, where they come from. Well, if any of y'all are major uh, Tolkien fans like myself, you would actually know where it originated from and where the hobbits actually were stated to, well, be placed as. However, for any of those people who just like the films, I have to give you a word of warning. Read the damn book and you'll understand that the book is a lot better, especially The Hobbit, or as well, the animated films are a lot better than whatever the hell this says. I can never watch The Hobbit films, mostly. The only thing good about it was the fighting. Uh, but, entirely, I do have to put this out here. Uh, when it came to Peter Jackson's films, The Lord of the Rings, that was perfect. The Hobbit, why? Did you ruin it for me? Because, now, the first time I ever heard of The Hobbit would be mainly actually because of the fact of my father actually reading the Tolkien type of stories to me. Now, actually, if none of y'all have ever known anything about the entire uh, well, illustrated stuff, this is actually a book on the entirety of all the creatures in Middle Earth. And yes, I've read this thing more than once, and it's still one of my biggest go-getters. But now we have to understand is where do the hobbits originate from? Well, it's actually stated that they originate pretty much once lived in the foothills the of well, east of the Missy Mountains and as well also along the uh, Anduin River east of the Mint New City Mountains and as well in Greenwood the Great, which is all east of the Misty Mountains. Now and such, this is also known as the uh, Nor uh, I want to say the uh, Northern Valley of the Anduin, as it was called. And as such, they later on were supposed to have moved or uh, relocated to the Kingdom of Arnor. Until technically dissolved and such, which I will leave a link down below for any of uh, many of our uh, fellow YouTubers who actually do this a little bit more with the kind of Middle Earth story and history, which they have actually done really well. Uh, and in such, we actually have to understand that they go into the region of the Shire. Now, it's actually stated that the Hobbits would mostly be influenced by the culture of men, especially the Northmen, who would later become the Rohirrim. I might need to make another uh, video for them, hopefully, probably soon. But now, we have to understand, what is the height of a Hobbit? Well, the height of Hobbits is two to four feet. And in such, what would their arms and armor be? Well, seeing as though they moved from the uh, northern valley of the Anduin to the Shire, we do have to understand, they mostly would have been influenced by mankind, and in such might have adopted such a, well, type of equipment. However, it is stated, though, that hobbits were great archers, and as well, a type of skirmishing units. So we had to put that into play. But the major thing we also have to understand is what would have been their great equipment and such. Well, one thing I do have to put out here is the fact Helmets, such as anything like, well, I got here and such, like anything like this or whatever they would have used, it would most likely have been from the mankind, meaning most of their helmets they might have gotten from humans, such as from the former kingdom of Arnor, or as well from the village of Bree, or from the Northmen, in which do wear Viking helms and such, but however, maybe they could have also gotten themselves kettle helms, maybe. I'm thinking that might work. 
It's because the fact since they're small in stature, I think it would be perfect for them to have some sort of uh, elevated type helmet, especially to the fact if it, to stop an oncoming blow, especially from striking the head. This could easily be seen with some sort of arms and armor, like say a bassinet, or as well something like this, which this type of, uh, well, either of Roman or Celtic origin, which as we understand, it pretty much deflects the said weapon to the side. So yeah, any type of helmet like this would definitely do. Or as well something like the Viking Helm or Sprangen Helm, which is meant to deflect it. So Kettle Helm may be out of the question unless we take a look at a Italian model. So there is a bunch of variations of helmets they could have used. But the thing is, as I stated, they mostly have to get this set equipment from men. And the fact is, hobbits were adventurous folk, depending on their uh, group or families. In fact, the Bura, the Tooks, for example, are a good example. And as such, they were actually known to become leaders and all that. Uh, but majorly, when it comes down to, say, their other equipment, such as mail, for example, I think that they would have to buy this from men, and the fact is, it would have to be riveted upon on it. So, in other words, it would probably take a lot, it would uh, not take that long, but due to the fact the Shire is, like, well, the Shire, and such that's mostly a village and such, like uh, what we understand, like a small community of farmland or a big farmland area. So I don't think that this would be uh, much in resources unless they were technically selling wine, wheat, or something like that. So you see my point. But we can understand that the Shire did have a lot of goods and resources that they were stated to have actually shipped from many parts of their area, such as pipe tobacco, which would be one of the major ones. So, yeah. Now, in such, we can actually understand that they could probably get rich from this, and they could actually get some of this plate armor, depending on their uh, stature and wealth, and such, such as, like, say, if they were a higher up standard, or in such like that. Now, uh, in doing so, I could probably see them probably wearing mail, mostly because mail is easy to construct, especially for a childlike uh, person. But, however, plate armor is a little different because you got to get the measurements. So, mostly they would probably wear mail. However, in such, I do not, I really, I do not see them actually wearing any type of leg armor because of the fact of, well, this is another one we got to come up with, is the fact they're probably also going to be using shields. Shields are probably the biggest thing out there. Now, you see me having a couple of these shields here, and as well, you also see off screen a Viking shield, and as well, a buckler. Now, what would be the major shields they might have used? Well, for one, if they were fighting by themselves, for example, like they were one-on-one -on -one and such, I could actually see a hobbit using a buckler as their main shield, because of the fact it's going to protect them a lot more than it would be using a heavy shield. However, they could easily have gotten a heater shield, for example, and as such, it could have been shipped from the former Kingdom of Arnor, which if none of y'all know, Arnor fell, yada yada yada, blah blah blah, there's a whole storyline, I will leave a link down in the, scroll in the description. Uh, but in such, we have to understand that they could have also made their own shields, such as, yes, a heater shield could be one of them, and it's going to be a lot easier to construct due to the fact their body size would make it look like it's a kite shield that protects their entire body. In other words, kind of like a tower shield. However, I could also see them somewhat using a uh, hopolite shield, because this thing can protect my entire body mass, and they are slightly stronger than you think. In fact, people think, oh, Templar, they got the bunch size and muscle of a uh, child. Not exactly true. They're kind of pretty much full-grown goats, so they can actually have a little bit more strength. But in such, I do not see them using this in a one-on-one. -on -one. I can only see them using this, say, for example, if they are in formation fighting. So, that could work. Now, there is another type of shield that they could have also created, such as the Wicker and Hide shield, like we see from Bronze Age cultures, and in such, was actually stated to probably be used a lot more than anything else. In such, it, if you don't know how this type of shield is made, it's made of Wicker design, which Wicker is this uh, type of what we might call a uh, fastening design. In other words, it's all mixed and such. Kind of like how we would think of mail, only, well, with 
plant life, and in such it's then covered over with a hide leather, in such which is boiled to make it resistant for said opponents. So it could actually probably work, and in such, this type of shield design has been used for centuries, even long after the Bronze Age, and we can actually understand why, because of how good it was, and probably because also of uh, resources what was lacking. In fact, it's actually stated that Egypt had done this, and many parts of Africa had actually still used the wicker design and hide design for, uh, well, <laughs> Tiberia. And due to the fact, if we take a look at the size of a cow compared to a hobbit, yeah, I think this could easily help them out a lot more. So, yeah, they could easily make at least five shields probably with this one hide alone, so this could probably work. Now, though, this just depends on any type of shield. Now, if any of y'all have any artwork that you want to put out there, please let me know, because I've seen a lot of art industry about it. Sometimes I've seen hobbits using no shield at all, but as I said, it's probably best for him to have a shield like a buckler than no shield at all, especially if it's going to be safe from an orc and he comes down with a weapon. Guess what? He's just going to lift it up and deflect it to the side and then probably kill the orc, which uh, also that brings me to another set of armor. That would actually have to be padding. Now, many of you might wonder, Templar, what the hell is padded armor? Padded armor is Gambeson. It is probably one of the best armors out there, other than mail. And if none of y'all know, mail armor is good armor. Thing is, though, it depends on what's hitting you. For example, if you're going to be fighting against an opponent that of which is bigger than you, what they're going to be wanting to do is pretty much come down at you or come at you with the side. Meaning, they're going to be coming at you with a swinging blow. They're not going to be wanting to do thrusts, which... The major opponent of a gambeson is either an arrow or is a sword blade or type of spear blade going with a thrust. And in such, guess what? The Hobbit will be wanting to use a type of set of armor like gambeson, which can easily be made, literally, I'm not kidding, you can easily make this armor out of nothing. In fact, a very heavy uh, winter coat is technically of how... Uh, thick this thing is. In fact, this thing would be of eight layers, sometimes eight layers of cotton or wool mix. And in such, with the mixtures, it would actually go from, it, but in such, it would be somewhere between five to eight layers of wool and cotton. And in such, it would be cotton, wool, cotton, wool, and so on and so on. So it can actually do its job to stop certain weapons. And you can understand why. So, how tough would this stuff be? Let's just say it is not easy to defeat a guy wearing Gambeson alone. In fact, Gambeson has been known to be uh, the standalone army uh, type armor for centuries, even used by common soldiers. And the reason they is, is because it is been well, <laughs> designed to do so. In fact, uh, Aztec warriors, especially the Aztec Jaguars, use a type of cotton dress mixed in with saltwater brine, meaning it is actually known to stop arrows from penetrating into the said body, even if they were meant to be armor piercing. So we can actually see that working. So in such, I can actually see a hobbit wearing a type of gambeson-like uh, type outfit with, depending on their rank and class, and in such, they were probably the most uh, lesser known or the most common would be, would see, would be a hobbit wearing a gambeson and probably a gambeson helmet, or in this case, a gambeson uh, armor head, in which was thus be heavily padded. Now, this can't stop a weapon, but it can probably stop the sword from probably cutting open your skull. Still, though, it would be better to actually use a sh uh, helmet, but as I said, this would be a big rarity. So in such, I could probably not see most uh, hobbits doing this. But, uh, in such, they would probably wear that and as well have a type of shield of any one of the variety, as I said. Such as anything that's probably a tower-like, which pretty much they probably all will be, due to the fact their height is around two to four feet. And in such, they're pretty much, I could actually see them mostly using a shield such as a heater shield, probably from Old Kingdoms, or what they could easily make themselves, depending on how they can make it. Uh, now, 
Even Viking shields could probably work, but due to the fact they would have to use metal mostly for the metal boss, I could probably see them mostly using a shield that they could just put their arm in, like we would see with a heater shield. In other words, the strap-on type shield. Da! Don't even go there. I already heard, I already seen a lot of idiots. But as well, there's the Bronze Age Wicker Shield, so that could pretty much work. And with high design on it, that could probably stop, well, an orc from probably getting into his arm. And in such, he's also wearing gammas underneath, so extra padding. Now, as I said, probably every hobbit's going to have a type of buckler, which there are many bucklers out there, so yeah. Any type of one will pretty much do, because even I've even seen some bucklers just the... Uh, size of this little opening here so that could still work so buckler shield heavily in there so i don't know why they didn't actually have that for the hobbits in this because you got to imagine hobbits would actually probably be using a buckler and in fact samwise gamgee especially in the uh fellowship of the ring episode or uh scene that we see with the battle in uh moria for example and uh none other than balance tomb uh, I think Sam was using a frying pan, I think? So, would be a good substitute for that. So, you can understand that it could actually work. And if they could cast it down and turn it into this, th that could probably work too. Uh, but now I'm also pretty much going to be hearing a lot of people ask, uh, but Templar, what about their weapons? What weapons would they use? Well, besides the most commonly known sword known as Sting, which I kind of like the Peter Jackson Derry version a little bit, because it kind of reminds me a little about this sword. This is a Greek Xephos, which it's actually stated they could have copied off of. And yeah, it actually is designed just like the sword. Now, uh, it's kind of a little different because uh, whoever made this didn't actually do their job. Uh, because it's supposed to be a little bit more leaf-like. So, yeah, but whenever I think of Sting, I somewhat think of this, but I'm more of the animated type of Lord of the Rings guy, because the original Sting I once saw was in the original Hobbit design variation, and it showed it with a, I think, a finger lock, or a finger guard lock, which was decorated and such, and it did have that, uh, well, leaf-shaped design, only slightly smaller. And in fact, uh, Bilbo Baggins actually stated in the books, and or I think it was in the books, I can't remember straight, but in the Hobbit animated sh uh, movie, it actually stated that Gandalf asked him that he also has acquired a blade, and Bilbo says, yes, a dagger, but for one my size, it suffices, which a dagger his size would suffice. This could actually be a short sword, in fact, this is actually a dagger. This is a Pugio dagger, or a Spartan Hopolite sword. And in such, Spartan Hopolites did use small short swords like this in order to fight. In fact, it's actually stated that the an Athenian asked the Spartan why he would use such a short sword. And in such, he even stated that he only needs a small amount of blade to kill his opponent. So in other words, this would be perfect. And for a hobbit, his opponent would be big, and he would not need such a big sword. He would just need a small type dagger-like weapon like this, which is a leaf-shaped blade, just like Bilbo Baggins and Frodo's Sting. Which, whenever I think of Sting in real life, I'm thinking of this mostly. This reminds me a lot about Sting, because it looks like with that leaf-shaped blade. So, leaf-shaped blade, perfect, and it's meant for warfare, so this is perfect. Because, just imagine this. You're in a heater shield formation, or a uh, shield formation and such, or whatever shield you want to put out there as, and guess what? He lost his spear. Well, guess what? He's going to use his sword and stab, stab, stab! He, but as well, this king can also do cuts. So, two weapons and one. So, this perfect idealism for Sting, what it could have looked like. And in such, they could have actually used any type of weapon... Uh, especially, for example, they could have used any type of knife and or daggers. In fact, most of the time, daggers back then were incredibly long for our understanding. In fact, when we think of a knife, we actually think of a small blade about yay big. Uh, no, back then, knives were huge. Yeah. In fact, 
here is an example of a knife. This is a Kwama type, uh, or in this case, a short sword, which, this is not a short sword, this is like a glad, this is like a gladius to me, an eastern style gladius. However, many people would start to say, Templar, this is not a, this is not a dagger. Tell that to the eastern people who actually would call it that. And it's such, this thing is kind of like, well, a dagger. And it's, it's made for that. So yeah, even a gladius or quama or whatever you want to pronounce it, dagger-like weapon, can easily be a dangerous weapon on the battlefield. So anything like big like this and such could pretty much be a... Uh, because yeah, these things are actually about the same height almost. In fact, let me just get the blades out to show you the difference in length a little bit. Because when we take a look at their length, they're almost technically about the same height. Uh, when I say almost, I mean almost because it's because it's like only like about like a quarter away from it. So this is only a quarter smaller than this. So that's saying something. So this thing could still be a dangerous weapon and pretty much still be used by a hobbit, which I could probably see a hobbit using this still. However, I think it would probably depend on how much they could afford, but most hobbits would not like to go on an adventure unless you were of the said race that would. Uh, but as I said, any type of short sword-like weapon, or it, when I say short sword, I mean like real like short short because for them, but in such, they could probably use as a weapon, or in this case, elongated dagger. So even a rondel dagger, I could, which is a, which if you don't know what rondels are, rondels are these elongated, uh, spike-like daggers. And in such, I could probably see hobbits using that also, or as well, they could even use a bollocks knife, which later evolves to a Scottish dirk dagger in history. Or they could also use something like this, a falcata. Now, uh, it's actually stated that uh, Falcatas are one of the most dangerous weapons out there. Uh, now, I don't even know if this is true or not, but some people even pointed out that uh, Orcris, the Goblin Cleaver, is, is probably based off of this uh, type of weapon. I want to say that's true, but at the same time, I do not, because to me, it looks more like a falchion. So, yeah, but however, it does have that historical type curve in it, which... Orcris does too in the Hobbit film. So, uh, yeah, but I think Orcris is a little bigger, but uh, let's see. Uh, but technically, this is somewhat a little bit bigger than that. So, this might be a two handed sword almost for a Hobbit, because remember, y'all, they have smaller hands than us, so we gotta think that one through. Uh, but another thing we also have to understand is the fact they're going to be wanting reach against their opponents. So they're going to need spears. And in fact, they're going to end up forming spear formations in order to defeat their said opponents. So in other words, we might actually see them probably using pike formations, just like Alexander the Great used. Or as well, any type of number of uh, groups in history that were said to have used a pike-like formation to defeat their opponents. But, since they live in the Valley of the Shire, they can easily also use the woodland areas as a skirmishing point. Now, why does this actually matter? Well, kind of obvious. They could easily then actually use their archery skills to defeat their opponent, such as with slings, which slings are probably the most easiest to manufacture weapon, and as such are easy to make. In fact, it's actually stated that... Uh, Sheep herders actually use this a lot more than they would a bow in order to defend their flock against a wolf. So they would actually be expert marksmen with the weapon. And in fact, the Romans named them the mini catapulti, mini catapults. And in such, they could easily defeat their opponent. So that could actually make some sense. Uh, but as well, they would also use bows, and in such, I could also see them using a throwing dart, which throwing darts, like a plumbata, for example, are easy to construct, little metal ever needed to be involved, and in such, they could easily just use a crossbow bolt as a plume, as technically as a throwing dart also, so that could make some sense. However, that brings me to my next subject, is crossbows. Would they use them? Maybe, because the fact is, crossbows can easily be manufactured with nothing more than some pieces of wood. That's it. In fact, yes, you can actually make a crossbow using nothing more than wood and string. That's it. And in such, uh, the reason because of that is because of how it's easily able to be constructed. In fact, 
there was a historical bamboo made crossbow, for example, that was entirely found in China. However, the crossbow design variant is stated to have uh, been so badly dissolved and because of the decades it was spent in a tomb. We don't know how many of these things have been made. But however, there is the Chinese repeating crossbow, which I could probably see a hobbit probably using since of his height. He could easily just, well, work that shaft and probably just shoot out like a couple of hundred of these, uh, well, small crossbow bolts in a matter of minutes. So I could probably see one of them doing that. Just imagine a whole hundreds of hobbits do that all at once. They're going to probably kill a lot of orcs, but it's not meant for power. It's just meant for speed. And in such, that's what the hobbit needs most against his opponent before they rush inward. But in such, the most main weapon I could probably see, especially the adventurous hobbits, especially in uh, the Lord of the Rings or as well the Hobbit films and such, would actually have to be a small buck, one-handed buckler-like shield and a small short sword, or in this case, a dagger. And in such, this could be a sword to them. In fact, they could easily defect and stab, deflect, stab. They could easily get to the arteries, they could easily get to the foot, the leg. Hell, they could probably get the guy in the groin by accident, or as well on purpose, and stab upward into his bowels. Yeah, that's kind of horrifying, and uh, I just get pretty much imagining a hobbit probably coming after me like that now. <laughs> However, another type of idea we have to understand is that the fact that hobbits would also use other weapons besides this. Now, what would they also use? Well, they would actually use everyday farming implement tools, that which we see in our own modern day. One of these would be an axe, which a farming axe, or utility axe, is easy to understand. Now, I don't even know what a utility axe is. A utility axe is an axe blade with a hammer on the back end. And in such, this was actually meant for two things. One to chop wood, the other to hammer in a nail. So, in other words, to construct your house. In fact, back then, you hardly ever saw a hammer on its own unless you were in a blacksmith shop. That's about it. And in such, axes were a big variety and such in history. So, I could actually see a hobbit actually using an axe to pretty much create his said, well, <laughs> home, in fact, of chopping down trees in order to create the little small burrows or foothill areas into creating the said home. Now, in such, they would also probably use is flails. Flails are a type of dangerous weapon on the battlefield. And in fact, I could probably see a hobbit using a two-handed flail. However, I don't think they're going to need that since they could just use a one-handed flail and it could be a one two-handed to them. So in such, a flail could easily be dangerous. And in fact, these were farming implement tools that were incredibly dangerous. So just imagine what might happen if a hot it's in the hand of a small youngling who can easily whack it into your head. Yeah, pretty much this is what every parent's nightmare whenever they actually think of their kid coming at them with a weapon when they're so young. Oh, I gotta really think through this video. Uh, another weapon could also be maces. Maces are a dangerous weapon. Now, and such, maces can actually be really easily constructed. I'm not kidding. Maces are very easy to construct. In fact, all you need is a wooden pole, and in such, you can easily just, say, take bronze or any type of metal or something like that, and construct it into a lob of, well, just a big giant head, well, not giant, but you get my point, on the said shaft. And in such, it's just a devastating weapon, and just what? It doesn't matter if your opponent's wearing armor, it's going to technically kill... Uh, not kill, depending because of the size of the hobbit and such, but it will hurt like hell and probably cause internal bleeding. Especially if it comes to the fact that the hobbit is smaller and he's going to go for the legs mostly. So, guess what? That orc is getting kneecapped. Now, I could also see him also wearing, using some improvised weapons over the years, such as a bill hook. If no one know what the bill hooks are, Bill hooks are farming implement tools to actually, uh, well, edge a tree. Now, we actually use this actually every day, and we don't realize that this thing was actually a medieval weapon on the battlefield. 
uh, and it originally started to uh, cr well, trimming dead limbs. Sound familiar? Yeah. See my point? These things were incredibly dangerous. So what we gotta understand is of how dangerous this was to a battlefield, especially to an orc, because now this weapon's going to pretty much slice into an orc's open area behind his neck or something like that. And it's such, I could actually see mostly farming implement tools, but the hobbits, uh, if they were in a warrior's and such, if they were or warrior garb, then yeah, they would be mostly influenced by men. So, yeah, we do get the fact that they would actually use mostly farming implement tools, but in such, they would mostly rely on weapons that were actually used by men, and in such, most of the time, their weapons would be, well, uh, daggers or spears, mostly, unless they were skirmishing units. Now, depending if there are a bunch of people that say, oh, but Templar, what would happen if they would have a bigger sword, like, say, a two-handed sword? I could probably see them using a broadsword, for example, and manufacturing it into the fact that technically the broadsword's going to be a lot bigger, so they're going to be wanting to uh, use it like a two-handed great sword for them. I could probably see that working, but nah, I don't know how well that's going to work out so well in the long run. But uh, you got to imagine, though, it would actually sound something like uh, the fact that they need a big sword to defeat a big enemy, so they might end up using something like that. But it's that's the big thought out there. But if y'all have any suggestions on what I should have actually chosen, please let me know in the comments below. I'd like to hear your ideas out of it. Please let me know. As well, guys, hopefully see y'all in the next one. And hopefully to hear any ideas that you might have for a Fantasy Friday video, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to get right to them immediately and think it through. Anyways, guys, it's been Templar. Hopefully see y'all in the next one. Like and subscribe for more. And also to the above 100 notifications if the next video comes up. And also check us out on Facebook. Anyways, see y'all in the next one. Mm -hmm.